Okay, so now we're going to be starting the men's foil final. You should expect this one to be a very, very different bout than the previous one. At least if what I saw in the two previous semifinals is any indication. So Nestor Levin is an incredibly aggressive fencer. He just goes for it. There's not much setting up or anything. He just likes to attack. The first bout that he fenced ended at 15-14 in the first period, which means that there just were a ton of actions off the line. And so, Lucas Orts is, he has very strong defense. He's got a really good attack. He's really solid all around. So, I think that this bout will depend a lot on whether Nestor Levin can make those sudden and immediate actions work. And if he can, he's going to keep using them and use that as an ability to push Lucas on defense. And if that doesn't work, he's going to have to give up some of his hyper-aggressive game to deal with the way Lucas is fencing. So we'll see how that plays out. So right now the referee is testing the weapons and you need to have your foil be able to support a certain amount of weight in order for it to be acceptable to fence with. And this weapon is not passing so far. So they're trying to put it on a table to stabilize it a little bit. Sometimes excessive vibrations will cause it to be able to support less. Um, kind of like if you're weightlifting, the stabilizing muscles don't allow you to lift as much weight. And that's exactly what happened here. The the foil was not supporting it when he was holding it, but when he put it down on a solid base, it did support the weapon. So it's just, it's basically like right at the edge of what's acceptable, which is exactly what you want because it means that you're more easily able to score touches and any slight edge like that can give you an advantage. Nice prise de fer by Levin to start the bout. <clears throat> it's off target, so it's a null hit. Also, you can see a noticeable height difference between these two fencers, and so foil is the only weapon where you can hit the person and they don't have the ability to hit you because your arm is not target, so that will play a part in this bout as well. And you can see Lucas wants to stay quite far away from Levin. Maybe at a distance where he can land a counterattack or something like that, but Levin can't necessarily hit him. And Lucas is also moving in and out on defense a little bit, so that time he kind of desensitized him to the way he was moving and moved in very suddenly. I don't know what happened there exactly. Oh, I see. So I think the plug was too far forward on his body, and so they moved it back so that that electric cord, which is necessary for scoring touches, doesn't interfere with the opponent's ability to hit. And that was a nice um, two-tempo action by Lucas Ortz. Lucas Ortz, I think, is the clear favorite in this bout. He's just so, so strong in all areas of his fencing and is extremely established on the national circuit. So we'll hopefully come down to how good a game plan Levin has to combat what he's doing in order to make this a competitive bout. Wow, nice, nice pull. A little subtle body fake there by Orts just to show that he's coming in, which makes Levin finish, and he hits him on the arm, which is not target. It's another null hit. And that was a very nice step in action. By stepping in, he made Orts hold his arm, and closing one line made Orts try to go around to another one, but Levin was still able to close him out. Attack from the right is successful. You saw Levin just make a very small stop with his feet, which gave Orts the right of way. And so far, Lucas is having a lot of success controlling the first zone or the beginning of the action. And so you see him being a little more aggressive there. And Nestor 
has to kind of play the game that Orts wants him to a little more rather than forcing Orts to play his game. And you see again Lucas being aggressive and being rewarded with a touch, so Nestor has to then do something different. You see him asking his coach if she agrees with the call, and she says the call is correct, you need to do something else. And so he's straightening his blade here, perhaps to take a second to think about what that something else should be. So the referee calls pair repost for Orts. <clears throat> Levin is asking if it was two blade actions or just one. The referee says he only saw one. A distance is playing a large role because Levin is not, does not have the ability to hit from the distance that Orts is keeping. And he's being a little bit greedy in the first zone, which is causing Orts to really run away with this as he's winning almost every action that's happening in the first zone. And control of the first zone is not something that is typically extremely important in foil. It's normally an, a saber thing, and a saber thing only where that is important. But you see here, Lucas is controlling the first zone extremely well, and he's getting a ton of touches with it. That was a very nice remise. You feel like you have no space on the back line, but in foil you can actually step in a little bit in that distance to make it hard for the other person to hit you. So. Orts looked like he was on his last legs, but stepped into a close distance where it was hard for Levin to hit him, took a parry, was counter parried, and then forced his arm through anyway to get that touch. So Levin changed his weapon, probably a tactical change. Maybe he was losing the confidence in the weapon a little bit, but I think it was more to just give himself a second to break or some momentum and think. That was a more aggressive action in the first zone that we've seen be successful so far. He was parried, but he didn't lose a touch. And Orts' defense right now is just too strong. He's not really giving Nestor any way in, and he's mixing up really well going out and going in on defense, so it's hard for Nestor to figure out whether he should make a short attack or a long attack. You can see the subtle distance changes that Orts is making while he's moving backwards. And he's, because he's so far ahead, he's having, he has the ability to play a little bit more. And you can see Levin is getting a little frustrated about the way that he's moving. In foil, oftentimes, you see blowouts. Well, let me rephrase. In foil, you will see blowouts more often than you will in the other two weapons because you can recreate the same situation over and over again, and if the person doesn't know how to deal with it, which is clearly what's happening with Nestor's attack versus Orts' defense, you can just keep setting that situation up over and over again and forcing the other person into a situation they're clearly not comfortable with. And this is a very recreatable situation that Orts has control over, and so Levin's having a really hard time doing anything right now. And you've seen, it's kind of interesting, he's abandoned, Lu Lucas has abandoned the first zone game, which was getting him a lot of touches until that touch. Parry, counter parry. Oh, the referee's not sure. Yep. So what happened there was Levin actually counter parried Lucas, but he did something illegal with his back arm, where he turned and used his non-weapon arm to cover some valid target, which may have interfered with Orts' ability to hit him. And... You can't see it on the camera, but there are two additional referees in the background who are watching each of the individual fencers for infractions they may commit. And on that repost, the referee who's watching Levin said that he saw, oh, that was, that looked uncomfortable, said that he saw Levin put his arm in the way, and so he gets a card instead of a touch. Because you can't do something illegal in fencing and still score a touch. See, Lucas is playing a little bit more now with the way his blade is. 
Good timing on the counterattack from Levin, but it's off target. 21 seconds remain in this first period. Lucas may want to finish it off before the period ends, so as not to give Levin a chance to think about how he can make a change in the next part of the bout. Although 13-1 and now 14-1 is, is a pretty insurmountable lead. At this point, if you're Levin, you just want to go out having scored like at least one or two more touches, although this isn't such a blowout. But the important thing is to never give up because you're always only one or two touches away from being able to figure out your opponent. And it's extremely difficult, but if they can go 14-1 on you, you can go 14-1 on them. Maybe a little too late at this point, but we'll, we'll see if he can get a couple more. Attack Touche. It's a nice fake to the lower body and a nice hit to the shoulder, which is a very actually difficult target to hit because it's so small. And uh, so Nestor just covered target with his head on the repose, on the remise there. And so he's going to end the bout on a red card. An unfortunate way to end the bout, but it didn't look like a comeback was going to happen there with how dominant Lucas was in one of the most prevalent situations in the bout. So it ends 15-2. Congratulations to Lucas on an incredibly dominant performance this weekend. And we'll be back in a few minutes with the women's Sabre individual final.